Hi guys, welcome back. Um, my name's Andrew and today I'm going to show you um, a little preview into a personal project I've been doing uh, which is like a horror style um, character similar to sort of Silent Hill, Resident Evil, that sort of thing. Um, been wanting to do something like this for a while uh, just because it's fun and stuff. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you um, here's a sort of teaser image, um, and I'll leave it at that. Um, what I will tell you is that all of this has been painted in Substance Painter, um, so all the barbed wire, the skin, uh, the blood, even the sculpt, um, like the skin detail has come from Substance Painter. So. I will be showing this probably in the next lesson, um, but for today I thought it'd be interesting just to show you how I went about making the barbed wire, because I actually got quite a nice sort of rusty material um, out of it that I've saved away and, and stashed for for future stuff. So, um, so yeah, let's sort of go through how I went about making this. So here's how it looks in Substance Painter with a bit of fancy doff and stuff. It looks pretty cool in the viewport straight away. Um, I've got a couple of U-dims to cover um, the barbs themselves and um, the wire. So let's just turn off all the fancy stuff and take a look. So looks pretty gnarly, which is cool. I was quite happy with the result from this and it really didn't take too long to, to build up this look. So so let's cover the um, the rust first, because this is something you can you guys can make yourselves at home. Um, and having a good rust material is always useful, because um, there's always rusty things in whatever we seem to work on, isn't there? So. Um, so yeah, you can see this sort of the traditional um, dark powdery layers that have been eaten into the sort of fresh um, metal that's exposed. So let's, um, I've saved this out as a smart material. Um, so let's open up the test sphere and just have a look at it on there and we'll go through some of the layers. Um, so previews, yeah. And before you guys comment, no, I'm not going to put it um, as a downloadable link. I want you guys to make it yourselves because um, that's a much better way of learning than um, just downloading it and plopping it onto something. Yeah, you're not really learning that way. So, um, all right, cool. So let's delete that and we'll drop the smart material on. Cool, so that's how it looks on the test sphere. Um, and that sort of response is quite nice. We got a really matte, um, powdery, sort of eaten in rust, and then some shiny sort of highlights coming through. And I actually have another layer in here that was turned off that adds even more sort of powder if you want it to be even rustier, um, which is sort of cool, but. Yeah, so, so let's just go through each layer and what I did to, to build this up. So the first layer, which is just the, the, the clean, cleanest material, which is the steel rough material preset, which is just in here somewhere, in there somewhere. Um, so you guys should have this from the standard install of Substance. Um, so I just started there, didn't really tweak anything, didn't really need to, it's just sort of the base material and from there we sort of work our way up so so looking at reference images sort of start with the the lowest layer first which is the the super dark powdery stuff so I tend to work um, with flat fill materials and work on like a material property itself so that's just the base color a metallic contribution and a, a roughness. In this case, roughness is all the way up. It has a slight metallic contribution because it's a metallic powder. Um, and then the height information is in a negative value because I want this material to chew in to the um, 
to the metal so rust you know doesn't sit on top rust like eats away at metal so we we treat that as if it's going inward so if you wanted it really heavy you could you know chew it right in but you sort of want to play it subtle to start with because we'll we'll come back and build up that complexity as we go and you know if you've got a couple of layers and they're all really heavy it, it gets very strong very quick so it's better just to keep it um, subtle and build up on that complexity so um, uh, so the next layer which was this optional sort of super heavy powder coat um, was this one which is once again like very rough slight metallic contribution and a slightly brighter base color but this one goes in quite a lot and because the mask we're using is soft um, it sort of starts to really chew into everything and this is where we start to see this this nice layering of something that's been really chewed in and we start getting that nice sort of detailing um, uh, but let's so oh, I uh, skipped over the mask I was using let's cover that quickly so so the mask I'm using um, once again is just a fill with um, one of the the presets in there grunge dirt scratched um, so let's look for that one dirt scratched grunge dirt scratched and um, yeah just basically tweaking the balance and contrast um, to my liking before moving on so this that's generally how everything is is built except for this guy in here so um, cool so we'll leave this layer off just for the moment and we'll go on to the next one which are the bright reds so you can see uh, this one's a little bit different where I'm running a um, a material and a gradient um, to control a bit of the color detail on this layer so if we look at the base color itself so we can see this actually has some some color information so if I was to turn this off that's sort of what the layer looks like without any color tinting um, and this is something I use all the time every day is um, gradient filters across black and white images um, like the grunge, grunge maps and stuff and it's a really good way to get really nice color variation without keeping things too constant and we can sort of see that up here we've got these really nice sort of vivid oranges down to sort of darker browns and we, we start to mix in against this backing color so um oh yeah that's a that's a good way of seeing it so you can see in here um so the gradient filter is is super useful it's a one of those bread and butter kind of tools that you start to use every day um and we can see material property wise um so slight metallic contribution because um, we're still dealing with like a, a metallic powder um, completely rough and the height is chewed in a, a fair ways fair ways you can see it's sort of yeah chewing in a bit um, so the next one we need is like the the contrast in the rust of like a lighter color so so I've got these bright spots which are these guys here so these have that real nice rich sort of um, rich orange colors uh, once again three-quarter metallic contribution this one's not quite as rough um, just so I can start to introduce back some um, roughness detail because uh, if everything's flat you'll um, you'll start to lose a little bit of interest so you can see this this pops just a bit more than the um, the darker underlayer stuff um, so we'll take a look at the roughness map for that um, and we'll just flick this channel on and off so you can see sort of in here there's um, we're starting to build up um, some complexity areas like here you can see it's chewing it back so you just get yeah it just helps to get this to pop just a little bit um, which is nice I think it looks nice uh, same deal I'm using just um, uh, a fill 
with the map plugged into it and I'm just adjusting the, the balance and the contrast sort of really sort of bread and butter stuff but it works a treat um, and then the last layer once again is another bright sort of color and it's just a sort of top up those spot details with just another sort of bright layer that's a very subtly different color um, subtle different roughness and metallic contribution um, like so so you can see it doesn't it doesn't take much to build up that sort of nice level of complexity um, and it's something you can do um, by yourselves uh, very quickly it's a good thing to practice because this sort of layering um, comes in handy when you're just sort of starting to build a material um, for this case I wanted like a really heavy rusty material and because it's barbed wire there's not a lot of surface area to cover so for me this was more than more than enough for what I needed and I had this option to allow more metal through to sort of control how old it was um, and I ended up keeping it off for my um, barbed wire uh, yep so you can see um, this worked better for because there's not a lot of surface area to cover just in here so this worked better but yeah this is the smart material that created this um, and the last thing I'll cover is the blood and how I went about that so I made two variants one was like a runny blood and one was blood spots which I think is the one I actually used in the end so yeah so now that looks pretty cool it's pretty shiny and it's pretty spotty and heavy-handed um, on the bump just because of the distance that I had from the the barbed wire so this is a similar technique to what I used for uh, Logan's claws for the final Logan film um, I was responsible for creating uh, the look dev for Logan's claws I was the the look dev lead on that show um, so that was pretty cool um, we got to build up all these wicked sort of blood templates and and um, yeah have have a lot of fun with that and this is very similar to um, to how I built that up not not quite the same there's a, a little bit more complexity um, for Logan's claws than, than this but this is essentially the the foundation of, of how that was done so I'll turn this off so you can see so that's sort of the this is more like coverage um, over over an object rather than anything deliberate um, but it gives you the idea so so the same deal we've got this layer um, I'm, I'm actually using an anchor point for this which I'll get to but so we're using a gradient um, with different hues I'm actually going dark bright dark to, to really sort of pop some of the map details um, I'm using grunge map 03 with a bit of tweaking and stuff um, which is looks quite good for this coverage sort of thing and now the um, the anchor point is actually being used up here for the height so so this is this is really simple but a really cool thing you can do with anchor points is that I want to convert the luminance information from the color into a uh, height detail so the way I'm doing that is on a new channel um, and I've got every channel switched off except for height and if we go to height yep so we can see there I'm just blending it back a tad now I'm taking the color the base color and I'm ranging the base color into the height channel so essentially you can see I'm, I'm taking the basically the luminance remapping it and converting that into height data and that's a really useful thing you can do with anchor points because um, it means you can translate things like this very easily into height um, so whilst it's quite simple um, it's really effective um, and it gives you this cool sort of 
gory effect, I guess. Um, and then if I want to adjust, um, oh yeah, so the masks. Yep, it's the same deal, just layering up. Um, I had a levels control here for some clarity if we needed it. Yep, so that's sort of a little bit drier and more spotty, um, just using levels on there. Um, yeah, so if I adjust this, so you can see how that's affecting the, the height detail of the blood. So it's a cool little trick. Um, and yeah, essentially what was done on, on Logan, but um, on a simpler scale, but it gives you the idea. And you can, of course, build up complexity in the same way that we built up the, the rust if you wanted more layers or runs or things like that. I think this one, let's have a look at what I did for this one. Oh yeah, so this one's uh, like a runnier like a secondary splash sort of thing. So you could actually run yeah, both of them in a way and pull down that height information. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mmm, it's black. So uh, yeah, so just a quick one today, but um, a little bit of bread and butter stuff, but uh, very useful because you know it's the, it's the bread and butter tools that you use in repetition for daily assets, um, and once you sort of get really familiar with this sort of layering structure and keeping things simple and building up complexity, you can get very far very quickly um, and breaking apart materials um, in this way of um, just from the ground up. I find a really good way of going about it and then you've got lots of control afterwards as well um, especially things like that so um, thanks for tuning in to this video um, if you guys haven't already um, subscribe here there'll be more videos coming um, it's a little bit freeform at the moment but it'll eventually become a little bit more scripted and organized <laughs> um, but yeah and uh, check out my website if you haven't already, um, andrewpalmer3d.wixsite.com. It's just a free website builder, but um, yeah, it's really good. And I'll be posting my tutorials here. You can see some of the previous work I've done, um, some stuff on Logan, which you'll have to click on because it's not suitable for under 18s, um, interview with algorithmic. And you can also keep up to date with some of my personal work on here. There's a nice full res viewer, um, which is cool. Um, I'll be posting like work in progress stuff here that won't go on ArtStation as well. So yeah, keep an eye on that. If you want to jump to move to my ArtStation, there's a link here as well. I will be posting more stuff, including the next character when he's finished. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.